last one, and it's a question by Mrs. Crawford, and she's asked me to ask the question. What is your position, this is for all the candidates, about identity cards and the NHS database? So, not, not a small question there. Start this one with Luke. Uh, could you please stand up when you answer the questions? We can't see you at the back. Yeah. Thank you much, Thank you. As a software engineer, I understand the importance of uh, protecting data. There's no point in having. There is no point in having a policy to have encryption on people's data, that it must be password protected if you then have that CD with the password printed on the disk. <laughs> this has actually happened. And there are, uh, I think, using a bit of computer technology, there are cryptographic techniques which you can use to protect and separate people's identity from their name and their details. So, unless you have, unless you can give that number to them, you cannot get access to the data. All right? Okay. Now, it, it, it's not difficult to do this. All right? Now, relating this to the question about um, uh, uh, patient records, you don't, you don't need cross-nation things. You've got, you've got, we've got telephones, you can phone up, you've got, you, know, you can contact people about it. Your records do not need to be on a national computer database. All right? It's just not it. You trust your doctor. Yes? You trust your doctors? No, that's not. It doesn't. It doesn't have to happen. All right. So, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Right. Identity cards. Not happy with identity cards at all. Um, I think in politics you always have to ask yourself the question, what next? Yeah. So, if we'd all have identity cards with all this stuff um, on it, what, what's the logical extension of that? What, what's next? Well, the next thing is going to be people are going to say, well, do we really need these identity cards? Because you could have the information put into the back of your neck like you chip a dog. If you saw, if you saw the latest the, the James Bond film where he had it put in his arm, do you remember that? And his, his controllers could see where he was um, all the time. Um, and I, I worry about that sort of thing. I worry about a surveillance society. I'm old enough to have read, uh, to not only have read 1984, but saw the famous a television version of it where Richard Burton paid the Inquisitor um, and that gave name to the, the, the name to the Big Brother, you know, Big Brother is watching you and also Room 101. Um, but that was a, that envisaged a surveillance society. It actually envisaged a European super state that was a surveillance society and everybody was monitored all the time. I want to live in a country where nobody has the right to stop me in the street and make me identify myself unless I'm actually, unless he's a policeman or she's a policeman and I'm committing a crime. Very much against them. Thank you. ID cards and databases, they, they, they do have a tendency, they're a bit of a live rail in politics, I, I think. They, they've got a bad name and I'm not saying I'm about to try and give them a good name, but we do have to think about, there's three elements, uh, I think, to think about. First, the philosophy. Do, do they potentially infringe our liberties? Secondly, the utility. Can they be put to any good use? And thirdly, the cost. Is it just, is it cost effective to do it? I think in the case of ID cards, there is a utility argument to be made. They can be used to allow people access to public services. They can be used to prevent terrorism. They can be used to, uh, in the same way that we use a passport. So there is a utility argument. But there is equally a liberty argument, as, as Roger has just outlined. 
And we have to be very careful about the balance there, which is why uh, the Labour government has talked about introducing a voluntary ID card, so there, there would be no prospect of you having your collar felt and asked to provide a bit of plastic. And the same utility point, I think, does go for the NHS database, because there are times when doctors in different parts of the country will need to access a patient's records, especially with, with, uh, with long-term uh, uh, long conditions, or even in surgery, where doctors will be able to zap pictures of what they're doing actually in a surgery and ask people in, elsewhere in the country to, uh, to comment on it. And I've seen demonstrations of that. But the cost is the thing. And I think the way this government has gone about procuring the, uh, the NHS uh, IT programme has clearly uh, not gone as well as was intended, and there have been any number of cost overruns, and it would be madness of me to stand here and try to defend it, and I'm not going to defend the cost. But on the utility and the concept, I do defend. Thank you. I'm uh, philosophically against all this kind of control freakery that we've seen over the last 13 years under the Labour government. Uh, I'm a liberal, he would expect me to say that. But even if you don't take that view, the cost is astronomical. And that's why we have made a commitment in the Liberal Democrats to scrap the ID card scheme, and we will pay for 3,000 extra police with the savings. Would you rather have 3,000 extra police or an ID card scheme? Very likely your data being lost on the train sometime. <laughs> I know what I would prefer. In terms of the um, NHS database, Richard is absolutely right to say the costs have absolutely spiralled out of control. And we're not at the end now. And to sign a blank cheque for these kind of IT schemes is craziness. We need a much more intelligent attitude towards these kind of solutions. I've actually opted out of the NHS database. You can do that yourself if you wish to. But um, the cost of it is just, it's just a silly amount of money at a time when we have all got to tighten our belts and the government has to as well. So that's why I'm against that. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, the Conservatives absolutely agree with the Liberal Democrats on this. And I think before, <laughs> I, agree with, I agree with Mike. Um, and um, for, for two reasons. Um, practically, practically, um, if you created a giant national database which had details of every single citizen in the country, that would be a massive invitation to hackers. And I'm sure that wouldn't include Lou because he'll be totally law-abiding, but Lou will know lots of people who would be able to hack into that database. And that is, as he says, it's so easy to do. And you know, we had ID cards in this country during the war, and there were good reasons to do so. But what we didn't have during the war was computerized databases, and they open up a whole load of different risks, which is why I think, practically speaking, it is, it is like a bees to a honeypot for hackers and would be incredibly dangerous. But also, I think it is wrong in principle. And the reason that it's wrong in principle is because in this country, we have fought very hard for our freedom. Um, it has cost the lives of many millions of people in both wars, but it goes long before the First and Second World Wars. And, and what has been fought for by the people of this country is the sacred principle that the people are the bosses and the state is the servant. It is not the case that the state is the boss. like about this idea of a computerized database is the idea that, I mean, bear in mind that the government spends half our GDP at the moment, that, that state employees, however well-intentioned, might be able to access details about us and effectively undermine that very, very important freedom. Now, I think there are huge advantages from technology, and I don't want to uh, lose out on those. And I think it would be fantastic if you were on holiday in Scotland you could go to a doctor there and somehow give that doctor access to your records. And that would be a huge step forward. But we need people like Luke to design a secure system so that we are in control of who gets to see information about us. And it's not people above us who are deciding who knows all those personal details. So ID cards are wrong and they must be stopped.